Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Joel Rosen. I am an adrenal fatigue recovery ninja and I want to welcome you back to another edition of your adrenal fix. Today I want to talk to you about adrenal fatigue and hormone replacement therapy. I consult with a lot of women in the 50 to 60 year old range and they have been on hormone replacement therapy for a long long time and the reason why they got started on this is because as they were getting older they were potentially losing their hair, they weren't as vibrant, um, they, they were losing their libido, and they saw their doctor who isn't an integrative medical doctor, or they're not a functional medical doctor, or they're an old school medical doctor, and they get them on hormone replacement therapy. But they don't explain why the hormones are, are depleted and what that has to do with the stress response. So today I want to talk to you about that and maybe shed a little bit of light on why it may not be the permanent solution to being put on hormone replacement therapy when you're not counteracting the stress response. And it all starts with cholesterol. And cholesterol is a very, very necessary fuel in your body that A, makes hormones, so if you don't have very much cholesterol, you're not going to have the raw materials to make hormones. And what do we put most people on these days is cholesterol lowering medication. And that makes me want to pull my hair out because, you know, in 1985, um, they had this big cholesterol movement. And we'll say in 25 years, we're going to get uh, the cholesterol lowering uh, medications into everybody. We'll see such a decrease in cardiovascular diseases. And 25 years later, it's worse than it's ever been. And what used to be 320 in terms of acceptable ranges is now less than 200. And even doctors want you less than 150. And studies show that the lower your cholesterol is, the more problematic it is for neurological disorders, psychiatric disorders, and just not any good wellness. And so that's a whole other video. We'll save that for another time. Um, but let's talk about eating healthy fats, medium chain triglycerides, healthy nuts, healthy, healthy seeds, healthy animal fats, all of these things are necessary for hormone production. And so what we have is we have this stress hormone pathway and the same stress that we need to, uh, building blocks we need to handle stress is the same building blocks that we need to make progesterone and, and estrogen and testosterone and estrone and it's in the same pathway and that's where things go wrong. So what happens typically is People, ladies' progesterone goes lower as they get older, and so does their estrone, and so does their testosterone, and so does their DHEA. It all goes low, and you got to think about why. It's all because of stress. So let's define stress. If you have a terrible job, if you have a terrible marriage, if you have a polluted house or a polluted environment or a virus infection or a parasite, you've heard me tell you this over and over and over again, then what's going to happen is pregnenolone has a decision to make. It can say, okay, we only have a certain amount of hormones to last us through the day and we're already depleted because someone told us that our cholesterol needs to be really, really low and, and so we already have enough of a tough job to figure out what we're going to do with this. But you know what? It's not important for us to make hormones. It's important for us to fight stress. So that is known as pregnenolone steel, and I've done another video on that. Um, so what happens is, as a result, all the hormones go down. And so what does the doctor do? The doctor gives you a trochee or gives you a cream or a pellet or whatever it may be to help with your hormones. But what did it do to the stress response? What did it do to your infections? What did that do to the job you hate? What did that do to the, the food that you're eating that's processed? Or what did that do to the food reactivity or the leaky gut or the heavy metal toxicities that are in your body? It did absolutely nothing. So you can go on all these testosterone hormones or pellets or creams or trochees and you're going to help um, give yourself a little bit of a temporary boost. And it's not temporary because you're on it for years and years and years and years. And if you combine that with the stress that you're dealing with and never address those things, then you're always robbing Peter to pay Paul and you're never paying, you're never really paying Paul. You just keep robbing Peter and keep robbing Peter. And I kind of joke around saying it's like having a burning house on the front end and you're putting out the fire on the back end. It's never catching up. You have to work on both ends. So the moral of this story is identify all your stressors. 
whether they're psychological stress, emotional stress, um, work stress, family stress, those things need to be dealt with. Then you got to look from an environmental stressors like viruses and pesticides and homes and sprays and chemicals. And then you got to look at how well you're eating and balancing your nutrients on a day-to-day -day basis. Until you fix those things, you are not going to get any better with your hormone replacement therapy because there's too many huge holes in the bucket. Hopefully that made a lot of sense to you and it made you think about the starting point, which is cholesterol. Are you on a cholesterol lowering medication? Are you eating enough healthy fats? Are you, are you trying to um, identify your stressors? Are you trying to reduce this burden in your body so that these hormones don't keep having to be replenished? And I'll tell you what, I've worked with a lot of patients in this capacity and what happens is ultimately they have too much hormones in their body. And then when they have too much hormones in their body, it becomes resistant, like insulin resistance. Your, your receptor sites will start to down-regulate, and now you have these chronically high circulating hormones in your body with down-regulation of your receptor sites, putting much more pressure on the liver. So now we have skin outbreaks, and we're not converting T4 into T3 because the liver does that. And then we're also not methylating properly, and so your whole biopterin pathway is not clearing liver, uh, clearing hormones, and that starts messing up your neurotransmitters, and the neurotransmitters are for healthy mindset and feeling great. So it's kind of like a whole negative spiral from there, and hopefully your head is spinning right now, and you're thinking, oh my God, I kind of understand what he's saying. Watch this video again and you'll start to have little light bulbs go off and you're like, yeah, that makes sense. So hopefully you made um, a couple connections here today. And if you liked what you heard, please give me a thumbs up or a share or a comment. And be sure to check out my, my blog on adrenalfatiguesociety.com. And I look forward to helping you in your adrenal nightmare. Thank you so much.